This week I'm going to be making an injection mold for this machine and what's going to make that mold different is that it's going to have texture on it. All of the injection molds that I've made now have had effectively smooth finishes. In other words, what I've done is just used close stepovers of the milling machine to try to make the finish as smooth as possible just with a milling machine. On some of the injection molds I've also polished them to get a not a mirror finish but close to a mirror finish. This time the customer has asked that I put some texture on it. This is my first time having texture on an injection mold so I'm going to walk you through the process. Uh, it turned out to be quite simple and you'll see that a little bit later in the video. What I'm going to do first though is cover a few things about making the injection mold and then I'll get to sandblasting the mold to give a texture and then finally making parts with the mold. This is the part that I'm going to be making the mold for. And I showed this in the previous episode where I did the simulation of injection molding flow. One of the things about this part is that it has some pretty thick wall sections and so I was concerned about sink. And in the previous episode, I did the simulations that show there will in fact be some sink here, but it shouldn't be too bad. It also said that it wouldn't take that much injection pressure to make this part. Now, I'm going to make the part out of polypropylene, and so because of that, I wanted to ensure that I scaled it up. And so I scaled it up by 2.5%, as you can see here, to account for the shrink of polypropylene. Other than that, uh, this is very similar to molds that I've had before. One thing you will notice is that this gate is quite large. I originally had a smaller gate. The problem with the smaller gate is that this would freeze off too soon, and this would not therefore be able to maintain pressure long enough for major parts of this to cool down enough to solidify before it shrank. And so what happened when I had this smaller gate is that the sink marks were much worse. And so having a larger gate allows me to keep the pressure applied while it's still molten in this area here to minimize the shrinkage in this area here. Moving over to the cam section, there is one thing that I did on this, which is these operations here. Let me scroll down. So I've got the contour around here. And you'll notice that I left this contour with some material still on the, the walls. I left uh, five thousandths of an inch. I want to texture this by sandblasting this. And so the idea is that I want to keep a little bit of material on here that I can later mill off because I want these surfaces here to be smooth surfaces. If these were textured, they really don't need to be textured from a aesthetics perspective. And if they were textured, when the plastic shrinks, it would grab more onto the textured part than it would onto the smooth part. So I wanted these to be smooth to make it easier to remove the part from the mold. And so as a result, you can see I effectively have a separate operation here, which is where I reprobe it to pick it up because I'm putting the mold back into the machine. And then I'm going to contour this section to remove the last little bit, uh, basically to remove the textured section and go back to a smooth section. I'm really loving using the probe to pick up the position for every single operation, which ensures that I keep accuracy. First using my tri-fly to get a nice smooth surface finish. And then the usual spotting for the alignment pins, drilling the holes, and then boring the holes. These two pins ensure that the mold halves are aligned each time to ensure we get the best parts. And then roughing out the pocket, and here I'm using a relatively large, for me, end mill, which is a 3 16 inch diameter flat end mill. Cutting the sprue that will feed plastic into the mold. If you look at the top, you'll see a section that has not been removed. So I'm using a smaller end mill. This is a 1 8 inch diameter end mill with something called rest machining to remove that material. And then I'm moving to an even smaller end mill, a very long reach 1 16th inch end mill, to remove the rest of the material in that section. 
I'm using the same long reach end mill to mill the flat area of the bottom of the mold. And the reason I'm using the same end mill is so that I can cover the entire floor. A larger end mill would not be able to cover all of the sections. And then cutting the wall smooth. I'm taking very small step downs for this to try to make the wall smooth. Given that I'm going to texture this later, I may not have needed to take as small a step down as I did. The second mold I have is very much the same. The difference is that I have to remove a lot of the material at the top because there's actually a part, a round section that is longer here, which should, because the the two bosses are slightly different heights. So I have to mill that out and then pretty much everything after that is more or less the same as what you saw on the first mold half. I've seen Dave at uh, Dragonfly Engineering use duct tape to mask areas off uh, for sandblasting. So I'm going to give that a try. I'm going to make it a little bit longer so I can wrap over the edges just to protect those as well. Then before I go further and, and completely mask it off, I'm going to see how easy it is to uh, cut this out. So I'm going to go around here. Oh yeah, that works really easily. Well, that's uh, easy, I should say. Okay, and then I need to keep it over these areas too. Now there's a little bit of, of overhang on some of these areas here, which I'm not worried about because I actually made these two pillars slightly oversized. So it's really the top face I, I care about because I'm going to put this back in the milling machine for one final pass to clean up these two bosses. Uh, but I do want this to be fairly close, which it is, because this is going to be the actual surface. So that's uh, fairly easy to trim back so that it's a perfect match. Okay, I'm going to finish uh, masking this up and masking the other one up, and then I'm going to go outside with uh, an air eraser kit and see how that does. I tried the air eraser and it just didn't work very well, so I reached out to local metalheads and Liz offered to help me. This is using her full size blast cabinet, and it, you can see it doesn't take very long at all to blast the part and to add the texture. I don't see any shiny spots. Yeah, I think I got it off. Yeah, it looks good. That turned out really well. I like the texture and you can see the texture seems to be uniform. I'm going to take the tape off now and see how it looks. And you can clearly see the difference between where it's been hit by the media and where it hasn't. And uh, the duct tape has no problem keeping the media away from the aluminum and protecting it.
Now I can see and feel a little bit of the uh, the glue from the tape left over because this is was on for yeah close to a week because um, when I tried the air eraser it didn't work and then I had to reach out to local community and find someone who could help me sandblast this. But uh, looking at at this, um, it's looking very good. Um, there is texture on these walls right here, but I made them slightly larger than I need them to be, so I'm going to put these back in the mill, and I'm going to mill those walls to make them smooth again, so that the plastic won't stick as much to those when it shrinks. And therefore, the texture is going to be entirely on the parts of the mold where the plastic will shrink away from the texture, which should make it a lot easier to get the part out of the mold, but we'll find out. I put the mold back in the machine and if you look at the top you can see there is a shiny section which is where it's re-machined the wall. And then after a little while farther down you can see the whole area is shiny. And then moving to the other side to clean up the round boss. And then the same thing for the other mold half. Here the round boss is on the left which it just finished and now it's finishing the hook part, this is what will retain the bracket on a screw. I had been doing some testing with white polypropylene, so here I'm switching to black polypropylene. And then I have to purge a couple times until I get black polypropylene coming out, which it will be doing shortly. This is the first test of the mold after the sandblasting. I did test it earlier. And the first test after purging it as well. I'm keeping the injection pressure in place long enough so that I can try to minimize the shrink. Basically, I'm waiting until I think it's had time to freeze off the gate. And then here I'm uh, setting the timer for one and a half minutes, which is about what the mold flow simulation said would be required for it to completely solidify. The texture seems to be providing enough resistance, so I can't just pull this apart with my hands the way I could before. So I got a set of screwdrivers to use in the slots that I had milled already in the mold to pry the two mold halves apart. One thing I can see is that it has, I can see quite a bit of shrink, which I compensated for in the mold. Uh, and you can see I had to use the screwdrivers to pry it apart. So now what I need to do is try to pry this up without damaging it too much. And this takes a little bit of practice there's a uh, little bit of a lip on here, so if I go in and it's like a chisel, so I can get it to move, and with some practice you can do that without adding much damage. But this isn't quite long enough, so I might actually want to get a, a, a chisel, an actual chisel. Anyway, after a little bit of work it uh, comes out, and I am some, seeing some flow lines on here. Uh, but um, it looks good and it's, it is textured. Um, perhaps not as much I was, as I was thinking it was going to be, but it is textured. And then I got an actual chisel, because now what I can do is I can go here and I'm pushing pretty hard and uh, pushing up. And then at this point it comes out and the, uh, I can barely see blemishes on there. So let me zoom you in on this one and you can see it's much better. Okay, this is the second one. You can see it doesn't have the blemishes, uh, the streaking as much. Again, probably because uh, it's purged more of the plastic. The shrink is not bad at all. It's pretty close to what uh, was predicted. Uh, and by the way, right now I'm only using um, 70 PSI of injection pressure and uh, looks good. Now I'll explain this part here. This I actually milled into the, the texture a little bit, which uh, was an accident. Um, and it's because there was, some there was a little bit of tape left on the bottom of the mold 
causing the mold to rise a little bit uh, by only you know one or two thousandths of an inch, uh, which was enough to cause it to dig in. But on this side, where I checked the mold beforehand, uh, it looks perfect. And this is actually the cosmetic side, as I understand it. So, um, you know, and I think they're just doing some tests. So, um, I think this should be good. I'll I'll check with the customer, and make sure he's uh, okay with it. If not, you know, I'll have to think about what my options are, but uh, the worst case is I just remake the mold, and that's not too bad. The cycle time for each part is a little bit less than two minutes. First, I have to pull it out of the machine after it cools for a minute and a half, and then pry it apart, as you can see here, using the screwdrivers. For some reason, I decided to see if I could just pull it out, but really I have to use the chisel and that works quite well as you can see. The final step is to clip off the gate. It does leave a bit of a residual but that's actually pretty easy to clean up with the chisel if you want to. And except for the areas where I cut into the texture the final part looks quite nice and I'm pretty happy with it and the customer is happy with it. Now I mentioned the the milling went a little bit too deep. It was fine on this side but it went too deep on that side. And what I discovered when I turned it over is that there was, as you can see there, uh, there was some some glue, etc., from the tape that was still left on the back. Now, it doesn't matter over here because the parallels are not over there, so I didn't clean it off. But there was some, oops, there was some glue from the, the tape you know, along here as well as along this edge. And what that meant is this side here where it uh, milled deeper was actually lifted up a little bit in the vise and that's what caused the issue. So I need to make a note to myself to make sure that the bottom is completely clean and if I want to double check I can use a dial indicator across this to make sure it is indeed flat and then the other thing that I could have done which again, since it wasn't flat, probably wouldn't, might not have helped, is to probe the top rather than use the bottom of the vise uh, for this operation because this is a, a known location because it was milled. So I'm pretty happy with how this turned out except for my mistake here where I milled a little bit too deep because I had some tape still on the back. The part turned out uh, quite nice and I'm happy with the part. Uh, what I would say is that the texture is not as aggressive as I thought it might be. I thought I was using media that was perhaps too coarse, but it turns out that it's actually not bad at all. And I'll have to check with the customer. Maybe he wanted even more of a texture, in which case I'll need to figure out ways to apply even more texture, probably using a different media that's even more aggressive. Thanks for watching. Uh, please help me grow the channel by giving me a thumbs up, commenting below if you have experience, for example, with sandblasting, what media do you use to get the different grits, etc. And also, please subscribe. Finally, I want to thank my patrons who have supported me on Patreon, and I'll see you next time.